So we're doing a custom hand texture in a house, so I wanted to run through how to do it. It can be called Old World, Imperfect Smooth, um, Plaster Link Finish. It has a variety of different names depending on what region you're in. So I'm going to walk you through how to do it. Um, we have a level 3 wall here. So there's been a 10, a 14 on the flats. Screws have been hit twice. Corner bead has been hit twice. Everything has been sanded. So let's go ahead and get into it. I have my mud here. It's pretty thin. You don't want to have it really thick when you're doing this texture because you're not going to be very happy with it. It's not going to spread very well. It's just going to not look the same. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to just take my knife and I'm just going to let it glide across. And I'm going to be using big long strokes. And this one, she wanted it pretty smooth. So depending on what you're going for, it's gonna depend on how you put it on. If you want it a little thicker, a little chunkier, you're gonna give it a little different. I'm not leaving a lot of open spaces because she doesn't want it like that. When you're coming up to quarter bead and things like that, come at it sideways. Because if I go and I try and texture down, like this, it's gonna be way too smooth because that's how we coat the corner bead mm -hmm. when we do our mud applications. So come at it sideways, so that way at least you're leaving some texture there. And then I put on about two pans worth of mud, let it sit, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna knock it down. So I've let it sit for a little while, and now here is where the magic happens. Like, Putting it all in is important, but not as important as this step because I'm going to be moving the mud around and filling up holes and making it nice and flat and smooth. And I forgot to mention, I'm using this 12 inch knockdown knife from Advance. It's really nice for doing textures. It's offset, um, so I'm not like putting my handle in the mud, anything like that, and it allows it to kind of glide over. So I'm just going to start in an area. I'm going to start pulling. I try and kind of grid myself out, but I'm always working into an area that I haven't worked at before. So I'm going from fresh mud to fresh mud to fresh mud. And that way if I'm leaving any lines, anything like that, they're getting covered back up. So depending on how much time you want to spend, how much energy you want to put into this texture, you can really get it really smooth in your smooth areas. Or you can just kind of slop it on and come back and sand it later. So, you know, you could leave that and come and sand it if you so choose. And the big thing with this is keeping it random, but not random in a patterny way. You don't want to look at the wall and see all of your stops and starts and have like little chunks and squares and things like that because your eye will catch that later when it's painted. So try and keep it as random as you can. You can always add more mud like I just did because I didn't like how textured that was there. This one's nice because you can always make sure your screws are covered. Hide any imperfections. It's an easy texture to tie into. And when it's painted, it looks almost smooth. So, as you can tell here with the quarter bead, I'm coming at it in a direction that's not making it totally smooth. See there, it came down and went flat, and then what it'll do is it'll fill in all that texture. So if you want it to be more textured on your corner bead spots, make sure you don't down it just across it. But that's kind of the gist of it. You can close it up, you can leave it a little more open, a little heavier, depending on what you're looking for and the style that you want. And it just takes practice. You just kind of got to throw it on and work with it. Different knives work for different people. Don't use anything smaller than a 10 for this texture. You're not going to have 
a nice look for it, a six, an eight, something like that's just going to be too small to get these large areas of smooth and kind of like that smaller texture. smoothness, all sorts of different things going on with this wall. So I did want to point out really quick, and when you're doing this texture, if you're having a very hard time getting into your angles, or you're leaving them messy, or digging into the other side, a trick those of us use is we will go through and get all of our ceilings done first. So we'll come in, bang on all the ceilings, let them dry, and then start working opposite walls from each other. So as you can tell, this wall here all the walls I'm working against are dry. So I'm not digging in to anything that's wet, taking any my texture out, and that way I won't have to come back and do any sanding or any cleaning up of anything. But this is what it looks like when it's all done. And when it's painted, it looks pretty flat. There's just a hint of texture, and it looks very beautiful, and it's very popular in our area. So this is how you do an old world, imperfect smooth plaster-like texture. <laughs> 